Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast with Latif Mercado. This is episode 29. Wow. (laughs) I know I've been saying that nearly every day this month. It just, uh, it was just probably probably one of the biggest commitments that I've made uh, in a very long time. Uh, But I'm going to tell you right now, before I made the commitment, the commitment to make this into a daily podcast, I really, really thought it over. Okay, so now I've done, I've been a part of projects where I just made shit really hard for myself, okay? One of the ways to make things hard for for yourself, okay? I'm going to give you guys a gem right here, okay? I preach this to my kids, to my wife, to my friends. Keep in mind, the least amount of people you have to depend on, the more likely you'll get shit done. Okay, I know some people will object to that. Okay, but there's there is a certain there is a certain uh, hmm, what you call it uh, I don't know a certain a certain level to that. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what I what I mean. <clears throat> if you have to work on a program and you need this program, you need to get this program going so you can you know get some business done then maybe I won't suggest that you spend a year or several months learning the program, okay? If you're already ready to go, to be up and running, and this is a good chance this is going to be profitable, then it's probably better for you to hire someone, even if it's temporarily, um, that knows how to do the program. So, remember what I told you before, you either have time or you have money. If you have the time, but you don't have the money, then you're going to have no choice. You're going to have to step to the plate, and you're going to have to learn most of this stuff. Now, a lot of people like to learn most of the stuff themselves. I know I do. There's certain things, however, that I I won't. I won't try to produce music, even though I used to, because I'm not set up for it. Not not to make it sound, you know, good. Um, there's quite a few things that I, I I'm very limited. Uh, graphics, I can I can. I can, I can, um, I can do uh, Photoshop. I could do Illustrator. I'm pretty good, and I inter- I use the two of them pretty much together. A lot of times, I use Photoshop to clean the image, and then I'll use uh, Illustrator to place the image into an area and then add text. So I use those. Okay, but it, to, it depends on to what to what level. If I'm trying to do flyers. And their flyers need to look really professional for a show. There's a good chance that I won't do it myself. I'll get somebody else to do it because the time that it would take me to do a flyer, some of these people could do it in an hour. I mean, for me, it'll take it could take either at the at the least a whole day. Okay, so so there are certain things that you want to. If you have to go somewhere and you're not a mechanic, don't try to fix your own car. Bring it someplace, have the pros do it, and then get in your car and get to where you're going, okay? But whenever you have an opportunity and you have the time to do stuff yourself or even to learn it, I suggest you do that, okay? Especially in the beginning stages of whatever career you're in, I do say try to learn. Again, you have to have the time. So if you're just working on a project, but you're not really ready to launch it and you're just kind of still feeling it out, it might be a good time for you to learn a program if you have to learn a program. I've taken, I've, I've especially marketing, I've learned several marketing programs and some of these programs have taken me seven months to a year. Now I could pay somebody to do some of these programs that I'm dealing with, but let me tell you something, when I'm talking about people charging $100,000 to run this program, to put it together, I'm not kidding, okay? And I really don't want to spend $100,000 for 
for someone to do something. Not only that, they can't do it once. They have to maintain it. Because if something goes wrong with the program, what's going to happen? I don't know how to do it. I don't. So, of course, I got to call them back, and it's going to be on their terms. So it can end up being very, very costly, okay? And I'm not prepared for that. I do not want to spend that kind of money. Um, I, for, uh, to learn a program like that, I really don't have it. I don't have that, that kind of money to put into a program to learn a program. It's, for me, it, it makes no sense, you know? So... But a lot of the other things I, 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 I do, I purposely think about it and I try to eliminate as many people as I possibly can. Now, I've had times when I've depended on people. When I'm um, way in the back in the days when I used to do my vlogs, I had people that were helping me with some of the edits and some of the music and some of the camera work. And it was never consistent because people, you know, People are not going to be as interested in your shit as you are. So you have to be prepared for that. You know, now I did the new vlogs. Uh, that's all me. I do everything. I do everything from setting up the camera, setting up the lighting, writing the script, filming it, editing it, adding the music, adding the special effects, adding the captions, and then uploading it, distributing it, and marketing it. Okay. Oh, it's a lot of work, but I get it done. Okay. Now, when I did the podcast... As I mentioned before, I have a, uh, I have another podcast set up with microphones, headphones, and that's for another project that we're going to be doing in a couple, we're going to introduce in a couple months. Um, but for the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, I need it to be as simple, as simple as possible, uh, where I don't rely on anyone. So that's what I did here. So, which, which is why every, every day I was basically like, it was amazing that I was, I, I still continue to do it. And uh, to be honest, I mean, we're hitting 30 days. I'm not tired. I'm not bored. Nothing stressed me out. I'm really getting the hang of it. Like I try to release everything by midnight. Right now it's 11 p.m. Will I have it out by midnight? I'm pretty confident I will. It will be distributed by midnight. So, and, and you know, I try to do it as late as possible so I know I really don't have that many distractions. The phones aren't ringing. Um, pretty much all my work is done. And I try to make it the last thing I do before I shut down for the night. So, but you know, with anything you guys are doing, um, whatever you can learn. And like I said, if you have the time, I'll learn it. Yeah, learn it and, and try to eliminate as many people as possible, you know, um, in the beginning stages, okay? Um, now, once you're able to afford to pay a staff or pay people, I'm talking about pay them, not give them a few dollars to do something. I'm talking, I'm talking about maybe put them on your payroll or, you know, hook them up so that way they're reliable because you have to pay for reliability. I know. I know this for a fact. And so I've had people that were excited working with me and the money situation, you know, um, stuff that was exciting for me wasn't necessarily exciting for them. And it was just in the beginning, it wasn't. And then after a while, they fell off, you know, and it's expected. It's not something to get mad about. You know, it's just it just happens, you know. So but other than that. Um, so, yeah. So, like I said, uh, this is uh, episode 29. We're going to 30. I think this month goes into 31 days. Um and then we're going to make some changes. Everything, I mean, we're still doing the podcast on a regular, saying nothing changes there. But some of the promos and uh, some of the thumbnails, we've created some new thumbnails, make it a little more eye-catching. Um, big shout-out, man, to everyone who's been listening. We are picked up in practically every, um, nearly every podcast app that's available. I don't think we there's anything that we're not on yet. It might be one or two. I'm sure there is, but I don't know like any of the main dis- distribution platforms. You know, like like I said, like the Stitcher or Apple iTunes or uh, Google Podcasts or we just got picked up by iHeartRadio. We were on, we still are with iHeartMedia. So this is cool. Also on YouTube. Every uh, every morning, uh, well, the day after, like this one will be posted tomorrow on YouTube, and you'll see all. So you can binge if you ever want to go on YouTube. You can 
go on YouTube and you can binge. And it's easier also to send the apps to people, I mean, the, the links to people. So we have that as well. Um, then I spoke with Fernando, uh, the program director for La Radio Live, and we decided that, uh, <clears throat> well, hopefully we stick to this uh, at February 1st to start launching the podcast also on La Radio Live. Um, so March, uh, starting February 1st at midnight. Okay. So this will give you another area to listen to it, you know? So, um, but the only difference with La Radio, what I don't want is I don't want it in any kind of order. So you're not going to hear episode one and two and three. You might, it might open up with episode. It's going to be random. It's going to be run random. I want that done like that purposely because I don't want that to be the main platform where people listen. If people want to follow through, follow along, I want them to get onto one of the apps. But if they're just chilling or they're kicking back or they listen to La Radio Midnight and it pops in, then they'll hear episode. Plus, I don't want the episode to be the same episode that they just heard, you know? So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so so you're going to start hearing that um, at, uh, at midnight. I'm wondering now, I'm thinking if we should make it at 1 a.m. instead of midnight. So that way, um, nah, I think I'm going to just keep it at midnight. I'll just keep it at midnight. We'll just, we'll just run it there. It'll be uh, one or the other. You can listen to one or the other. And then, uh, but it's not going to be in order. So, and that might be cool because, um, you know, maybe you'll listen to, you'll hear one that you forgot, you know, so it kind of makes it up a little bit. So it should be cool. So that should be starting um, February 1st. So, you know. Uh, I already submitted all the files and the rest is on Fernando. So, but he'll get them up. So we should be good with that, you know. Um, other than that, work. Uh, work is good. Uh, I mentioned, once again, I mentioned uh, we have um, Houston, Texas. No, we have Fresno, California on the 15th of this uh, February. The 28th, we'll have Houston at the Arena. Excuse me, at the Arena Theater, and then there used to be cocktails in Austin on the 29th. And then we're working on a Pride show. I, I didn't get all the details, so once I get the details, I will be sharing that with you guys. So, but um, all right. But anyway, um, what else is going on? Uh, pretty uh, pretty pretty calm day today. Uh, phones were ringing. A lot, a lot of window shoppers. People call. A lot, and I encourage them to call. So anybody who has questions about bookings, I, I know agents who get upset when people call uh, just to what we call window shop. You know, they call just to ask a million questions. And uh, I used to have promoters that used to do that. They used to call me, and they would call me, and they weren't even promoters at that point. They were just people that used to call. And they would call me once a week, ask me a bunch of questions, ask me some prices. Ask what I thought of this. Ask what I thought of that. Ask me to put up together a lineup. Tell me the market. Ask me, you know, what, what would uh, the uh, ticket sales, what would the ticket cost should be? What should it be? How would we promote it? Where's everybody flying in from? How do you suggest we accommodate them? <laughs> you know, they used to go through all of this. And sometimes, I, and they used to do this, like, I mean, for a person to go two years, even three years doing this is not unusual now most people would be like look at the phone ring and be like oh not this dude again damn all he does is call and ask me a million questions and i've gotten like that at times you know especially when you know you you're so used to you've gone through about a dozen of them already and they still haven't bought anything so but they're calling you and they're promising and they sound excited so when you actually get on the phone with them they get you excited because they sound excited and 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 I've learned that you be patient, be patient and work with them because so many of those people have become some of my best clients. I'm talking about clients who have booked acts for me pretty consistent and and many times they've booked concerts for me. So whereas they'll book, you know, seven to 12 acts or seven to 10 acts. So, and I used to always say, Wow, imagine if I didn't pay them any mind. Imagine if I wouldn't take their calls. 
imagine if I would have just kind of dissed them, you know, I would not have done this. I would not have, you know, this work would not have happened. So it's very important to, um, to be patient because you never know. And I, I, I realize that when people are calling and they're asking questions, it's because their intentions are to book a show. Their intentions are to put together a concert or some sort of event or just a one-off uh, artist. And that's why I did um, I did the book Freestyle Promotions and the Seven Simple Steps to Get Started. A lot of those, a lot of the stuff that I wrote in that book are questions that are usually asked. And this is true. So even though I'll still consult with them over the phone or through email or messenger, a lot of times I will send them also send them the link to the book. Not because the book's gonna sell a million copies, because there's a good chance it's not. But it gives them a pretty good uh, framework, and the book is in um, in sync with me since I wrote it, you know. So they can't say, well, you know, I read this, and this is what this said. Well, that's not going to happen. There's not going to be any conflict between what I say and what the book says. It's, it's going to be on the same page, literally, you know. Um, so, you know, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, I created that book. I created that book so that way... To help people, I made it real simple, and I said, "Well, you know, I don't want to bog them down with all this technical techno babble. They call it, you know, all this uh, this jargon to try to, you know, show people how smart I am and, you know, how how I know how to do this. No, 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 because that's the worst thing you want to do. That's that will scare them away. And instead, I try to show them basically how easy it is. That is really very easy. The hardest part." And it's not that it's hard, it's just it takes a certain kind of drive, is the marketing. And you have to be able to distinguish between marketing and spamming because right now nobody's out there posting flyers or handing out flyers or really buying radio time or buying TV time or buying newspaper time. No, no, no. Everybody's on social media. And people think that they can take the flyer and just post it a thousand times a day and then tag everybody on it. Don't do that. Don't do that. People don't like that. I know I don't. I will literally untag myself and let you see it. Okay, so it's not about I'm not supporting you, um, but I have other shows that I'm doing. And if I'm going to post a a show um, on my page, it has to be a show that I'm involved with. And even those, I don't go, I don't get crazy with with the posting. Because, you know, consistently without being annoying and without spamming people, that's what's going to work. That's what's going to take it home, you know. So, um, but, you know, a lot of people don't have, they've never done promotions in the streets. They've never, they don't know that part. All they know is how to post. So they'll post their flies and they'll put it out there. But there's a lot more to that. There's a lot more to uh, to just posting these flyers. So, but um, other than that, uh, uh, you know, I, I I want people to give it a give it a shot. You know, give try your hand. Everyone who has purchased the book and read it has contacted me and said, I feel like I can do this. I get that all the time. And I might have got not many, maybe three or four that have actually tried it, and actually one <clears throat> that actually tried it. Um, And one actually did several shows, several pretty big shows at that, uh, and did pretty well, did pretty well. I noticed that when he finally did start to fall off a little bit is when he started going outside of what I was was telling him. So the book was saying go right, and he felt that it was better to go left. And I I warned him at that. I said, you're going to think that this is the way you're supposed to do it, and it's not, you know, so... And so he followed his own instincts and it didn't work out. It didn't work out. So, but, uh, but he gave it a good shot, you know, and I think if he ever does decide to step back into the game, I really think he's going to do much better. I think he's going to really run with it uh, because he, you know, you got, you got to take your wins and then you got to take your losses. See, the wins in the beginning for him was phenomenal wins, man. Those wins were no joke. But when the losses came in, the losses were no joke either. 
but it happens all the time. Sometimes they get the wins and they, they get comfortable, you know, and they start to cut corners there. And they think, well, I really don't have to advertise like this because, you know, people already know me. People are coming to all my shows. I'm all over Facebook. I'm getting, you know, 10,000 likes. And then they do the show and they realize they got 300 people that come into a thousand capacity venue, maybe even less than that, you know, and they don't know what happened, you know. But it's about consistency and understanding what you're doing and making sure that you're not doing stuff uh, that are that's annoying people because people will just totally turn you off, you know? So, but other than that, uh, you guys could probably hear it. I'm a little under, you know, not under the well, I'm a little tired tonight. Uh, but, um, so I'm going to shut down. Just wanted to get on here real quick. And, um, uh, February we're going to be pretty busy. So we're going to have a lot to talk about. And, um, but I'll, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Be cool. Enjoy your evening. Thank you for tuning in. And good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.